situationism. There's no ism uh, when it comes to the situationist. I mean, situationism is precisely artists or theoreticians or philosophers who are using the situationist analysis of the historical situation in order to become successful within the already established institutions. So in that sense, uh, I mean, and, and this re response, this reply, of course, also al always uh, already uh, tells us a lot about the situationist project, that the situationist project was um, an attempt to fuse uh, the most radical experiments from the anti-assistic avant-garde movement, Dada and Surrealism, fuse these experiments with um, specific parts of the revolutionary tradition, primarily meaning Marxism and, and anarchism, fusing them in order to enable a revolutionary upheaval, uh, an abolition <coughs> of capitalist society, what the situationists talk about as, as the society of the spectacle. That could be a brief <laughs> <laughs> introduction to, um, to some of, of, um, of what, what we'll be talking about. One of the first precedents, uh, which was an unrealized project, happened in, uh, or not happened uh, in Amsterdam. It was a conversation between Guy Debord and uh, William Sandberg about uh, a kind of emancipatory educational labyrinth. Maybe could you introduce a little bit this uh, uh, yeah, aborted uh, project? Well, I mean, one of the really interesting aspects of the situationist um, experiment. I mean, we, we, we can start out also just by, by, by giving some dates. I mean, the Situationist International was founded in 1957, and the group dissolved itself um, in 1972. And already, I mean, that fact is, is, is quite particular. Uh, very few avant-garde movements end up dissolving themselves. Uh, so this, this, this tells us something about the Situationist um, the situationist project and that they had a particular um, conception of historical development uh, so that, that in some instances it was necessary to form a closed avant-garde group but in other historical situations um, there was no point in having a situationist avant-garde and in 1972 we know of course today that, that it was the wrong reading but the reading of of um, the remains of the Situationist Project in 1972 or in the beginning of, of the 70s was that after May, June 68, with the huge student occupations and student protests and general strike in France and all of the different things that went on in the world, in Prague, in Mexico City, all over the world, De Boer, um, Gianfranco Sanguinetti and the other Situationists um, they reckoned that the revolutionary process was underway somehow, that, that, and therefore it was no longer necessary to have a, a formalized avant-garde group. So they dissolved the group. But the group existed from 57 to 72, um, and um, in the first few years of the group's existence, um, I mean, in a certain sense, the group started out by uh, acknowledging that modern art had died. Uh, modern, a modern art had died as a transgressive radical gesture. Once with the, Dada, uh, the Dadaist and it was with French surrealism in the 20s, art could be used as a revolutionary instrument uh, in the critique of bourgeois society. But that was no, don no, no longer the case uh, in the mid, uh, late, 50s, according to the situationists. So they started out by arguing that um, art somehow had to um, transform. But in the first few years from 1957 to 1960, 61, 62, um, the situationists in different instances uh, reckoned that it was possible to use the artistic media in different ways. Use them not in order to, to uh, create beautiful artworks, uh, but use them in, in this revolutionary struggle <coughs> they were engaged in. And the, 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 the failed 
labyrinth project in, in Amsterdam, but also several other projects, are instances where the situationist um, considered or uh, sought to use the institution of art, artistic media, in order to um, articulate uh, a coherent uh, revolutionary critique of um, capitalist society and different forms of domination that characterized capitalist society at that instance uh, during Les Troncs Glorieuses, uh, during the, the coming into being of, of, of uh, um, the post-World War II welfare society uh, where many theoreticians, journalists, politicians argued that um, Western society was a bidding farewell to class struggle, that the notion of the working class, for instance, uh, no longer had any use uh, because uh, the material circumstances of most people were becoming uh, much better, were, were, were being ameliorated. But the situationist, of course, argued that that, that was not the case. Uh, what was taking place was what they talked about as um, a colonization of everyday life, where people might be um, getting access to cheap commodities, they might have a, uh, a st they, they might have uh, a job, but 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 the exploitation taking place in the factory was being supplemented by what they talked about as a kind of mental alienation, and what they. Um, what they sought to address was this mental alienation. And this, this uh, and, and what they sought to, to, to do was, of course, then to, to present different kinds of um, events or acts where it was possible to, to, um, to in different ways, critique uh, this new uh, form of alienation. So in the first few years from, from 57 to the early 60s, um, we have different, um, different experiments taking place or, or failed experiments like the, the, that, the Labyrinth Project, where the situationist um, approached uh, gallery owners or museum uh, directors um, talking uh, to them about, uh, I mean, I in a certain sense, trying to hijack the institution of art in order to use the institution of art to, to uh, as, as, as a front in a, in a battle against this new mental uh, alienation. So we have uh, Esko Jorn, who played a very significant uh, part in the first years of the Situationist Project. He was a co-founder of the Situationist International. At that time, he was probably the most well-known um, member of the Situationist group. He, was, he had already been, been uh, involved in socialism, uh, in, the, in the revolutionary surrealist movement. He had founded the Cobra movement. He was in contact with many artists all over Europe. Um, and and Jorn came into contact with Guy Debord, Michel Bernstein, and, and other people associated with, associated with the international letterist movement based in Paris. And they decided to found the Situationist group there in, 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 uh, in 57. But in the first few years, Jorn was active as, a, as an artist, as a painter, as a, as, as a writer, and uh, for instance, made his, his well-known um, modific modifications where he painted on, yeah, on, on, on flea market paintings, for instance, trying somehow to revalue or survalue or, or bring into life kind of like flea market paintings. We had Pino Galicio, the Italian uh, artist who uh, tried to critique abstract expressionist painting by producing a kind of abstract expressionist painting on... Um, what was a painting? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we had, of course, the, the Dutch member Constant uh, who, who set them in contact <coughs> with, with uh, the museum in Amsterdam, who, who made these new, these, uh, these mm, attempts to, to create a kind of situationist city, the New Babylon project. May, may, maybe you could introduce Fernando Copenhag, who was my, uh, one of the key collaboration between Debord, who was advisor, conseiller mm -hmm. uh, of Detournement 
and your no? mm. uh, made in one afternoon to uh, I mean that's already and that obviously, is, yeah. But <laughs> yeah no but 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 uh, that's true I mean so so in these first few years from I mean in, in within the, the, the reception of the situationist international it's customary to kind of like divide the project into three phases and and it has to be said that 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 this division uh, highlights or privileges uh, the existence of what in 62 became known as the first situationist international. Because of course, what took place in 61, 62 was that the situationist international split into two or more groups. So in 1962, a, a rival second situationist international was, was founded, run by Jörn Ness, and Jens Jørn Thorsen, who um, made what's uh, just in, uh, behind us. Um, but 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 um, but in these in these first years, um, the situationists the situationists somehow were capable of using art in different ways. Uh, but but of course, they considered the different artistic media as a kind of dominated forms, but dominated forms that they could hijack in order to present a radical critique. Uh, so, so we can't consider it to be like straightforward artworks uh, dedicated to bringing about a kind of aesthetic quality, aesthetic uh, specificities. But and this was a way to make art integrating already its own critique. Yeah. Recognizing art as a failure, exhibition as a failure. Yeah, yeah, you could say that uh, uh, kind of like the, the, the premise was, was, was that art was, was always, all, all, always already recuperated in a certain sense uh, in, the, in, in the language of the Situationist International. So, so um, of course, they already in, in from, from 57 onwards, but especially afterwards, tried to distance themselves from any kind of, of already existing institution, being it the art institution, but of course, always, but but of course, also uh, kind of like the political institution or the institution of political militantism, for instance. Um, but but in order not just to wait for the revolution to materialize, they nonetheless, of course, wanted to 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 prepare a revolutionary upheaval. And in the first years of the group's existence, they 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 thought that art could still somehow be a, a, a vehicle for a revolutionary critique. And, and uh, so Esker Jorn made his, modif his modifications, but, but also uh, two books in collaboration with, with De Boer, Van der Kommenhaag and, and Memoir, um, which, um, I mean, contain different, different uh, it's, it's a kind of collage book, different clippings from newspapers uh, Esker Jorn and, and Guy de Boer uh, picked up from Danish uh, newspaper stands, uh, cut them out and, 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 and uh, made some kind of montage, collage. Uh, and then Esker Jorn uh, went up on a, on, a, on a ladder and then kind of like just uh, um, uh, through painting uh, onto uh, the pages, making this book allegedly in, in, in 24 hours. And of course, it's a kind of, it's a map of, 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 of uh, modern life. It's a critique of the new uh, kind of like consumer society. There's, there's commercials, a commercial for a, a Danish cheese there, uh, commercials of, 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 uh, of men and women uh, consuming consumer goods. Uh, uh, there's, there's, there's different kinds of, of uh, uh, kind of like advertisements or, or commercial logos scattered across, across the book. Uh, but the, this, this is intermixed with different kinds of, of political statements, uh, for instance, concerning the, 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 the Algerian uh, Liberation War. It's interesting because they did not believe in, uh, in art, but they did believe in exhibition. And for example, we recreated uh, Guy Debord installation that he did for the destruction of RG6 in 93, 1963. And uh, who could be almost put in perspective with Henrik Plenier Jacobsen, a losing gas house for kids, where he took almost a situationist strategy of uh, using the exhibition itself, not art, as a um, critical apparatus. 
Yes, but of course, I mean, I mean, the, the, the problem for the situationist was that what they were kind of like the, the uh, whenever they tried to use the artistic media, what they were able to come up with the problem was, of course, that it, it, it um, the art institution was actually quite interested in what they were doing. And what they were doing was not dissimilar to what many other contemporary artists were doing. So it was, of course, extremely difficult for the situationists to, to, to kind of like highlight that difference, that, that what they were doing was not just kind of like experimental modern art. It was actually part of the revolutionary tradition, a revolutionary tradition that was at that moment in time, of course, primarily a gesture. And of course, they, they, they didn't want it merely to be a gesture or a spectacle. So, so whenever they engaged in uh, these kind of activities, they, they, they sought to kind of like prevent or highlight the fact that this was not meant to be looked at as an exhibition. So for instance, the, the, the thing they, 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 they made in, in Odense in 1962, it was, it was uh, explicitly not labeled a, an exhibition. It was precisely labeled a manifestation so it, 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 well, destruction of RST6 was called a manifestation by the situationists. Of course, the, 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 local, Danish, uh, the, the, the local Danish art critics, the, the, the Danish press, uh, didn't really understand the difference <laughs> and, and, and mockingly kind of like uh, talked about the show as, as, as being fairly uninteresting and, and uh, they didn't really understand what it was about. But, but the situationists um, themselves, when, when addressing what they were doing, uh, for instance, destruction of RST6. Uh, de Boer talks about the manifestation as a heavy-handed use of the medium of art or the medium of the exhibition. So, a so kind of parody. A kind of parody, or or some uh, like a, a, a tool uh, with which it was possible to present the situationist theory or the situationist mm -hmm. analysis, or a kind of a parody of an exhibition. Um, but, uh, but of course, the, it, 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 the, uh, the exhibition or the manifestation in Odense, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting that, I mean, it was, they, they, they for sure only mounted the exhibition uh, in 63 because uh, of the notoriety or the, the, the success of Jørgen Ness and Jens Jørgen Thorsen in kind of like gaining public attention in Denmark. Because what, what took place in in the summer of 1961 was a conference in Gothenburg where it was decided that uh, members of the situationist group could not uh, make situationist art. That was a contradiction in terms. They could make art, but there was no such thing as situationist art. Um, and and, and your Ness... So they were accused of falsifying? Yeah, it, it was precisely, uh, it, it was, I mean, to, to, to call something a situationist work of art was falsifying the situationist perspective. And Jörn Ness and members from the, the Gruppe Spur, who was also part of the situationist international, they, they objected and, and, and they, they considered art to be um, one of the few fields within which it was actually possible to be creative and present a critique. So what took place was that Gruppe Spur was expelled in the beginning of, of 1962. Jörn Ness and Jacqueline de Jong and Ansgar Elde was also members of the central committee of this situationist group. They objected and was immediately expelled from the group themselves. But what, but what uh, Jörn Ness uh, responded uh, by doing was setting up a rival second situationist international. And uh, he didn't uh, hesitate, but, but engaged in numerous activities in, in Denmark. For instance, making this uh, thing behind us. So doing an exhibition in, 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 uh, in a gallery in Copenhagen where the audience was, was asked to, 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 to chip in, to join in. Uh, when the exhibition started, there was nothing in the room. There was just a bunch of, of, of wood, uh, paint. And then the artist and the audience were supposed together to create a kind of collage. And of course, the, the, this Gesamtkunstwerk couldn't just be contained by the gallery. So they, they went out in the streets in Copenhagen and, and, and painted slogan, slogans on fences or painted on 
on, on uh, shops and, and, and uh, Jens Jørgen Thorsen and, and Jørgen Nassen and, and Hardy Strid were arrested by the police uh, uh, during these, these events. But because Nash and Thorsen and these Scandinavian situationists were extremely good at gaining attention in Denmark, the situationists um, in that Paris they were had complicit, to complicit with press, right? Like a friend yes, they, of the journalist and make yeah. a coup? Yeah, they, 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 they kind of like, they told uh, journalists in advance what, what they were doing in many instances. So kind of like gaining attention, mm -hmm. using provocations as a means to, 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 to kind of like rally people or, or, or get attention to what they were doing. But the situationists in, in Paris then somehow had to, had to respond. Um, and the only remaining Scandinavian member of the group, because all the, the, the artists had been expelled in 1962, Jolvi Martin, he was then in charge of mounting a manifestation in Odense uh, the following year, 1963. Um, but of course, the, the difficulty for De Boer and for Martin was using a gallery but not making an exhibition, <laughs> using something that looked very much similar to art, but was not supposed to be art. Um, sometimes they were in relation with the most recognized institution of the time, and let's say really recognized progressive lefty galleries from the time. So they were kind of trendy, almost. Well, I mean that that's but that was that, that was kind of like that the, the when when Esker Jorn left the group, Esker Jorn. The young, the, the older brother of of Jörn Ness, he perhaps recognized the impossibility of being a situationist, all the while being a, a recognized artist having shows in galleries. So he left the situationist group, continued to finance the group, and joined the group under a pseudonym, George Keller. But 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 he somehow agreed with De Boer and Raoul Weinigen and, and some of the other members that 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 the situationist group had to uh, had to uh, or to 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 create this radical position of enunciation where you don't compromise with the institution. Uh, but of course, it, it 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 became extremely difficult, and the the the, the kind of like the the perspective of 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 Jörn Ness and Jens Jörn Thorsen and the others in the se second situation is international, was that it was a it was a mistake. I mean they they, they didn't really buy into uh, the the, the kind of like Hegelian Marxist reading that Peter Bohr and Weinigen were were getting more and more uh, uh, kind of like involved in in the early 60s. Uh, they they they. Uh, thought that art was kind of like one of the few places where it was still possible to to do stuff to be creative they so pointed to the some of some, some, di some different trials that went on in the early 60s the trial against Henry Miller the trial against uh, the Danish surrealist artist uh, Wilhelm Freddy the trial against Robes Boer and they they saw these trials yeah. as, as as evidence that that art was actually during RG6, he released this text, I mean, Guido about mm. the different form of action possible in art, and mm. he only recognized three, uh, three examples that find a, a sense of legitimacy to his eyes. He talked about an old up of different painting in Caracas. Uh, he talked about this activist who revealed mm -hmm. the thermonuclear uh, shelter in UK. Yeah. don't remember the third, but mm -hmm. maybe you will help me. So that the three, maybe we can a little bit recontextualize in which political context happened in RG6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I mean the um, and the group spy in UK. Yeah, I mean the, the 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 title of the manifestation, if we follow the the, the situationist uh, way of, of describing what took place in in Ulmse. So not not exhibition, but manifestation. The manifestation took its title from a group of British anarchists activists who had uh, two months prior to the opening of the manifestation in Odense had revealed the existence of a, of a whole network of secret bunkers in Britain uh, where the, 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 the British government was supposed to hide in the case of a nuclear war. Uh, so, so British activists had, had managed somehow to, to gain access to one of these secret 
um, bunkers and, 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 and take photographs. And, and they staged a, a huge demonstration, a huge, huge march in, in, in London, where they then revealed the existence of, of, this, uh, of these plants. Uh, and so, so, so this is also interesting in, in I mean, uh, when it comes to this, this project, Destruction of Arts, you think, because it, it tells us something about the way the situationist sought to kind of like intervene in ongoing political discussions. Uh, so uh, kind of like what they did was they substitute, they, they, they tried to substitute the, the search for aesthetic uh, quality with what we perhaps could term political efficiency. It was, a pre it was a question of being precise and then trying somehow to combine, co combine or point to different ways of being critical towards existing society. So for instance, uh, uh, Marxist students in Venezuela uh, stealing paintings by uh, Gauguin uh, and, and, and trying to use them in order to, to, to get uh, imprisoned uh, polit um, political prison prisoners are liberated, connecting uh, that, what the situationists talked about as the, the, the proper use of art, connected to these British activists and their attempt to critique kind of like the, the, the whole um, Cold War, uh, nuclear, the threat of a nuclear annihilation discourse, trying to, to combine these different um, um, ongoing struggles, arguing that that this is what we should we should uh, support. This is what we should advance somehow, and then heavy-handedly using the institution of art, the gallery, as as as, as a scene where it it might be possible, but but of course it probably wasn't. And the situationist also had to, or in order not to 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 um, to let people believe that this was just an art exhibition. They demanded that the, the manifestation was closed fairly quickly because the, the, the owner of this small gallery, Tom Linhart, he allowed people to, it was, it was, um, it was set up as, as three different rooms and the first room was, was equipped as a nuclear shelter. But Tom Linhart, mm, he allowed people to enter a room where uh, Jolve Martin and Mich Michel Bernstein made something that could be described as paintings. And of course, that was, that was a, a huge betrayal of the, the project according to the situationist. And you so switch off the alarm, no? Because there was like a massive alarm that was almost very aggressive for the spectator. Yeah. And it was like too descriptive for the painting, so yeah. you like switch it off. Yeah. And in the painting, the reverse of the victory and the defeat, if I would, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, w so 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 the the the, the kind of like the the three com or the four components of the show, or the manifestation or the exhibition, whatever we want to call it, um, was this. I mean, a, a room which was supposed to look like one of these uh, secret nuclear bunkers. That I mean, and the title RSG six. Uh, this this whole network of compounds of, of secret bunkers were called RSG6, regional seats of government. And then they had numbers, and, and the one the British activists uh, managed to get into was called number six. So the title of the show was, a, was an homage to these British activists. And then the first room was set up looking like a secret <coughs> bunker with, a, with, with, with uh, an annoying sound, and Martin managed to get uh, a, an extremely smelly cheese he placed onto some bunker bed. So it, 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 there was a horrible smell and there was sound. And then the next room uh, in the exhibition, um, De Boer had made uh, his so-called directives, mm -hmm. where he, he had written revolutionary slogans. So, dépassement de la réalisation de la philosophie. So kind of like different <coughs> Uh, Marxist uh, slogans that, that and, 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 and one of the paintings was especially interesting because he had taken a painting by Pino Gallicio and just written on top of it, kind of like showing that this is the proper use of paintings. And this one's made of monochrome, white monochrome. Yeah, so. and the other ones were just white monochrome. And then in the last room, this Danish, uh, the Danish member of the situationist group, Jose Martin, had made his so-called thermonuclear maps 
that depicted the world after the outbreak of the, of the Third World War. And Michelle Bernstein had, make, had made her, her so-called victories of the proletariat, depicting the victory of the Spanish Republicans, for instance. So uh, trying somehow to reverse engineer history, trying to, to, to kind of like transform all of these historic defeats of, of, of revolutionary proletarian struggles and, and transform them into two victories. Mm -hmm. These were the three com or four components of the, the manifestation. But it's interesting because you also use uh, the exhibition as a way to uh, play war uh, or the exhibition as a game of war in order for uh, people to kind of uh, rehearse a total war against capitalism. So that's interesting because, yeah, the art was a game, mm -hmm. uh, a game of politics. Yeah. No, no, but and, and, and of course the difficulty was, was, was I mean, the, 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 the reception in, in the Danish press and, and kind of like us talking about this manifestation slash exhibition in an art exhibition in a, in, a, in a space run by the Danish embassy in Paris is of course totally contradictory and, 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 and within the framework of the Situationist project probably doesn't make sense, but, but that was the difficulty they were trying to, to, to get at uh, that that and, and the problem was, of course, that what what they ended up doing was creating a spectacle of refusal, <laughs> and that was, of course, what that was what they didn't want to do. They didn't want just to create a spectacle of refusal. They wanted to refuse the spectacle, but 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 how to go about doing that was was kind of like the the, the 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 most important question they were they were grappling with in in, in at this instance in the, in the situationist uh, project instead of not just withdrawing or disappearing uh, how how is it is it possible with what means is it possible to to launch a critique to present a critique where can where can one where can one engage in a critical dis critical discussion with with people. Jorgen Nash was also dubious um, towards the spectacle and for example he knew that exhibiting in an art institution uh, would be synonymous of you know uh, the museum or the gallery to digest the scandal and that's why he, at some point he performed a scandal in the public space transforming the city itself as a playground. Mm. Yeah I know and I'm, I mean in, in both the first Situationist International centered around Guy Debord, Raoul Weinigem and others, both the first Situationist International as well as the second Situationist International run by, by Jörn Ness and Jens Schoen Thorsen. I mean, they, the, I mean, what they shared was of course uh, a wish for a revolutionary upheaval of uh, capitalist society. What they uh, didn't agree upon was the means to advance or present that critique. So of course, uh, Jörn Ness and Jens Jörn Thorsen and Hardy Strid and the other Scandinavian situationists, I mean, they neither wanted <coughs> to end up as, as, as merely art. They of course also envisaged what they were doing as being uh, dismissive or critical or transgressive. Uh, but, but, but their reading of the historical uh, situation was, was different. Insofar as they, they um, coming from, from, from Denmark and from Scandinavia, uh, they, they were less reluctant to buy into uh, uh, a kind of like more classical Marxist uh, vocabulary. I mean, they, they, they were like, well, you know, it, it does actually seem as if the working class is, 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 is a fairly uh, content with just, just uh, kind of like uh, working and then consuming and, and I mean perhaps we, should, perhaps we should look elsewhere in order to locate a, a revolutionary subject or, or, or people who will perhaps end up uh, not conforming. So Ness and Thorsten were, were, were more interested in, in, in people who, 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 I mean young people, uh, people who are somehow misfits in, in, in different ways. Uh, and, and because of these trials taking place, uh, I mentioned before Henry Miller, Freddy Gruppesbur, uh, their understanding of the historical situation was that, that uh, art is actually a place where it's possible to do stuff. It's possible to provoke people uh, 
uh, using the, the, the field of art somehow. Uh, of course, not in order to, to, to become successful as artists. I mean, they were, what, what, what they were doing, they just considered to be, I mean, pranks in a, in a certain sense or, or just criminal activities. Nash financed uh, many of his activities by making forgeries of his brother's paintings, for instance. So he didn't care at all about uh, kind of like uh, different kinds of ordinary artistic criteria. It's w it was a question of, 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 of provoking people. And, and, and therefore, of course, they, 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 they sought to enrage the audience uh, or, or, or turn them into active participants outside of the institution of art, outside of the gallery. Talking about situationism as a prankster, um, I was thinking about Seven Rebels and uh, yeah, this uh, precise example, and maybe you could describe the procession mm -hmm. that happened and, uh, for the, that happened, sorry, for the opening of Seven Rebels, also in audience. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's probably one of the reasons uh, the, the manifestation destruction of RSD6 took place in Odense. was precisely because Jörn Ness uh, and Jens Jörn Thorsen uh, had, had organized an exhibition called Seven Rebels uh, um, the, the year before in Odense. Um, um, they... they it, it was an exhibition, uh, Jens Jan Thorsen, uh, Jørgen Næs, Heidi Strid, but also exactly. Jacqueline de Jong and Skar Elde participated. Um, but, but as part of the exhibition, um, Jørgen Næs, Heidi Strid, uh, Mette Aar and, and uh, Jens Jan Thorsen made a kind of procession or walk through Odense where uh, we see the, the, the kind of like the, probably the first instance where Jens Jørgen Thorsen is, is playing with the, the figure of, of Jesus because he's, he's carrying a, a huge cross. He's, he's, uh, his, uh, the upper part of his body is he's naked and he's, he's carrying a cross and, and uh, he's <coughs> presenting himself or the artist as a kind of persecuted Jesus uh, who's carrying kind of like the... the, the the sins of, of this bourgeois city of, of, of Odense, um, trying to pro provoke people. Um, and uh, Heidi Strid was, was carrying a bucket on, on, on his head. But, but um, for instance, for that, that uh, event or happening or whatever we want to call it, Thorsen had called uh, some of his friends uh, in, in Danish newspapers, kind of like, uh, letting slip uh, that, that uh, there would be some kind of very provocative event uh, taking place in, in the city of, of, of Odense just prior to the opening of, of the exhibition. Uh, and that, that was one of the first instances of, of, of Ness and Thorsen uh, doing kind of, um, I mean, something more radical than happenings, but, but kind of like uh, scan scandals in, 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 uh, <coughs> um, in the city, uh, scandals kind of like it, uh, aimed at the cultural institution or different municipalities or just kind of like any kind of bourgeois morality one could think of. Uh, I, I mean, uh, the Seven Rebels, uh, shortly after the Seven Rebels uh, thing, this um, took place in, 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 uh, in Copenhagen and kind of like from 1962 onwards till the, the, the uh, kind of like mid 70s, I'd say, Thorsten and Nash were extremely busy just kind of like uh, organizing pranks or uh, provocations uh, more or less continuously in Copenhagen, in Skåne, in, I mean, all over the place. Um, and that's a major difference as well between <coughs> French and Guidobor situationism and, and the Danish part, I mean, because the element of fun was really important for the Danish part. And uh, uh, Jürgen Nash was calling uh, Guy Debord Guy the Boar. And, uh, and also we could, there, there were prescient, uh, I mean, the Danish uh, branch, maybe in the way of um, um, what was the power of uh, humor. Uh, and for example, nowadays with uh, all the meme culture and how meme culture can influence uh, election mm -hmm. just by <laughs> making fun. Yeah, no, no, I mean, I mean 
that, I mean, the, the what, what Nash and, and Thorsen, their proposal was in a way that, that it was possible to provoke the spectacle or that it was possible to create a spectacle of ridicule or provocation and that that, that that spectacle would, I mean, would mean something or have a significance or could have, have some kind of side effects that would, that would uh, somehow scandalize uh, the, the, the kind of like, I, mean, I don't know, the, the, the established uh, bourgeois public sphere. Uh, and of course that was, I mean, De Boer and the French situationist uh, to a, a growing extent, uh, they of course disagreed and, 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 and were afraid of just ending up as part of, a, of an art exhibition or, 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 or as a spectacle. Um, I mean, <coughs> I, I, they, they Nash uh, in a few instances, in a few texts, he, he talks about this as being a difference between a, a Marxist and an anarchist approach to art at that instance. And I think it's a fairly good description of, 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 uh, of what uh, Nash and Thorsen were engaged or what they were engaged in. It, it, it was a kind of here and now anarchist activism or art activism that, that, they, were, that they were trying to, to, um, to do while De Boer and the, the French situationist, uh, of course, um, withdrew more and more from any contact with established institutions preferring to, to, to make their publish their journal uh, writing uh, critical texts of, 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 of events taking place in the world, uh, trying somehow to, to, to create a revolutionary vocabulary, which could be a preparation for some kind of, of, of showdown. But, but that's, that's kind of like, that's the, the differences. And, and uh, I think we, we, we can find uh, a certain dose of, of, of humor in both instances or in both practices, um, both in, in the first and the second situation is international humor plays a, um, a large part. But of course, the, the second situation is international with Nash um, are much more ludic or expressionist or creative or just kind of like Nash and Thorsen running around naked uh, in the Danish Royal Theatre or, or uh, <coughs> I mean, uh, making a spectacle of, of, of whatever event they could get access to. But it's interesting because like mocking um, institution, I mean, for example, we could imagine that Jürgen Nash was inspired by the letterist uh, prank, uh, the scandal, I mean, yeah, the uh, Notre Dame affair, where like five letterists uh, uh, disguised uh, into priests and then went into an um, Eastern ceremony and uh, in the middle of the church uh, on the altar declared the death of God, mm. which maybe could be related to uh, yeah, the decapitation of the Little Mermaid. Or you no, no, for sure. I mean, that, but, and that's, that's, I mean, there's, there's a whole long tradition, of course, of, of, of avant-garde pranks like that, uh, going back to, I mean, at least uh, the, the Dadaist or, 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 or the, the, the Surrealist. And in different ways, both situationist groups sought to incarnate that kind of critique. But, but um, for, for the first situationist international, for De Boer and the others, kind of like the, the ability or the capacity of the institution of art, but also other institutions to, to integrate different instances of critique, um, made it more and more difficult to, to intervene in ongoing discussions. Uh, so they had to be extremely precise and they, they were afraid that the situationist project would end up as precisely situationism, as a new ism, as a, as a new uh, artistic style, as a stylistics. Nash and Thorsten didn't care. I mean, that, that, that wasn't really the problem. I mean, uh, f f for them, it, it, was a, it, it was more like, it, it, it was more kind of hit and run, act, kind of art activism. That, that, that they, they, were, they were in a hurry and it was, it was better just to provoke people and, and get some kind of reaction. 
uh, and 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 there was no there was no reason to sit and wait for the for the for the local working classes to transform themselves into the proletariat. They just had to uh, get at it in a certain sense, um, and and of course that meant that they could to a large to a much larger extent just do stuff. I mean, claim that 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 nation either was the one who had. Uh, decapitated the little mermaid, or at least knew the one who had, or do stuff like that, kind of like playing with, with the, the, the Danish and Swedish media, kind of like uh, coming up with, with, with hints or fake stories, feeding them stories, and, and just kind of like trying to, 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 to run or control uh, the Danish media. And, and, and of course, to a certain extent, extent, Nash managed to do that, actually. So, so in, that, in that way, he was... He, he, he was capable of, of, um, of doing what the American Yibbies later, uh, Ivy Hoffman and Jerry Rubin, s sought to conceptualize, for instance. Um, but of course, the critique of, of, of De Boer would be that, that, that it, of course, what, 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 what Nash was doing was merely feeding the spectacle, was, was merely kind of like playing the, the role of a clown. And the problem for De Boer and the French situationist was, of course, that was of course that that was uh, where modern art had ended up. I mean, it had ended up legitimizing existing power by turning the artist into someone who could express him or herself. But but that was just. I mean, it was just the artist who was permitted to do that, and therefore the the, the kind of like the genuine artistic gesture. For the ball and the French situationist was trying to kind of like commit suicide artistically, or kind of like just not um, subscribe to 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 the kind of like the the um, the requirements of of uh, of modern art or the modern art institution. So maybe we could um, end on speaking about the possibility of. Uh, exhibiting situationism. I mean, obviously, we try to do it like by pastiching in a way, like transgression. Because as we discussed before, we it's obviously impossible to uh, to exhibit transgression without reifying, transforming transgression into an object, uh, obsolete object. And you exhibited as well uh, a situationist library, a burning library. Yeah. No. No. That's. Uh, I mean, I'm an art historian. <laughs> uh, and uh, of course, that's that's already a contradiction in terms that, I mean, the Bors archive is now part of, of the BNF, and uh, J.V. Martin is part of the the local uh, the, the the Danish um, the National Gallery of Denmark ha has recently acquired a, a painting by by J.V. Martin. Uh, Esker Jorn has his own museum in in Silkeborg. So of course. I mean, the situation has ended up in the museum that, that they feared that they would end up in. Um, and these, these contradictions or tensions are present in the project from, from the beginning, of course. I mean, De Boer and, and Jorn made plans to, 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 to install a kind of situationist library in the museum Jorn was planning in the, in the late uh, 1950s. So, of course, they were also trying to create a kind of uh, counter tradition, or, or, or at least trying to 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 keep the, I mean, what they were doing, they wanted they wanted it somehow to be kept alive, perhaps not in, in art museums and, and, and the, the, the national library, but 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 there was there was there was there was an understanding of the necessity of remembering historical events and and, and remembering the kind of like the, the different instances of the revolutionary tradition. But of course, it's extremely difficult as a as a curator or as an art historian to engage with the situationist material properly, uh, because one can one will necessarily always end up compromised uh, somehow. And 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 uh, so so when I uh, was asked to do a, a, a historical show on the Situationist International in, in 2010. I decided that that wasn't a possibility for me. So, so together with with uh, my good friend, the artist uh, Jakob Jakobsen, 
we uh, we somehow try to to do a show that that uh, that in a heavy-handed way continued the project of the Situationist International. So what we did was uh, amassing all of our Situationist stuff, paintings we had bought, and journals and drawings, etc., um, into a small room, uh, which we conceived as an archive. Um, and it, it, it was a, a beautiful situation exhibition. But, but uh, what we did was place uh, a couple of really huge smoke machines inside the room. Uh, so um, the, the exhibition was composed of two parts, this burning library and then a, a room next to it where we uh, sh uh, showed three films we had made that, that somehow tried to discuss uh, the question of revolution in 2010, so before the upspring, before the new protest cycle, be before Occupy, before the Yellow Vests, etc. Um, and, and we then uh, made the show into a, a kind of uh, like a theater play or film so the light went off and then directed the, 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 the audience through the show. And they, they started inside this library or archive. Uh, they could see all of the different situationist material. But, but, but really quickly, uh, smoke started going off and, and the light started flicking. And then, the, 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 uh, and then they had to, to, to exit the room because there was just too, too much smoke inside. So they didn't really have time to see all of the beautiful situationist paintings we, we, we've bought, Jacob and I, during the years. They had to exit the room. And then in the next room, uh, one after the other, we sh uh, showed three films uh, titled This World We Must Leave where we somehow try to, I don't know, combine the ball and Nash perhaps, or <laughs> <laughs> make some kind of, of gesture uh, towards at least the, the necessity of, 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 of keeping alive the, 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 the kind of, of radical critique we can find in, in, in both the, um, the first Situationist International, but also the second Situationist International. But, but that was one attempt to, to somehow both present the Situationist project within an art institution, but also block it or make it opaque, uh, kind of like turning the archive into a, a burning archive. Do you have any other questions? Yeah. No. So maybe if the public has some questions in French, English, even Danish. <laughs> <laughs> the third waves. Does he think that he would represent the third wave of Sionist movement? Me or the two curators? <laughs> or maybe the three of us. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no. No, but it, it's, it's funny because, uh, I mean, some... The, the, the Situationist project is so powerful that it's, it's very difficult to find anyone who has seriously engaged with the material who will call themselves Situationist. I mean, it, it's, and I suppose it's, it's for instance, it's, it's not the same if we talk about surrealism, for instance. Surrealism actually exists as a, as a, as a group to this day in, in, in Paris. But, but with the situation, is, it's, uh, it's a little bit different, at, at least in, in Europe, I'd say, because I remember uh, Ian, Ian Bowl, uh, uh, an Irish-American um, militant and, and, and writer who's running the Retort Collective, um, a, 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 it, it's a group of scholars and, and activists based in, in the Bay Area in, in, in the U.S. They've written, uh, they've written a, a fantastic book called Afflicted Powers, Capital and Spectacle in a New Age of War. It's an attempt to, to, to use uh, the war in a reading of the war on terror. But, but uh, Ian once introduced me as a, as a kind of 
later day situationist, and I was really puzzled. I mean, of course, I, I understood why, but 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 uh, but but as someone who has worked for many 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 years on the situationist project, that was like a blasphemy. <laughs> Is there any other questions? Yeah, sorry, I'll just come over here. Okay, so you said that um, they ended up in museums anyway, which I think is a failure. Do you think that uh, some artists tried to burn some museums and uh, galleries at some point to destroy and physically destroy? some places like that, or else we should burn this place now. <laughs> you want to reply? <laughs> um, museum, no, I don't, I don't have any memories of uh, artists trying to burn museums. I mean, there is like the famous example of uh, Givin trying the, to destroy the Eiffel Tower. Tower. <laughs> um, but museum, I'm not sure. I mean, for the, for the situationist, one of their kind of like fondest memories would be uh, during the, 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 the kind of like the final stages of the, of the Commune of Paris, when, I mean, the, when the common arts were, were contemplating setting fire on, on Notre Dame and kind of like all the churches and, and kind of like palaces in, in, in Paris, uh, that, that they, they, they found that to be a, a, an interesting Artistic gesture. Yeah. No, but there is. I mean, um, <coughs> I mean, we know an artist actually who is exhibited a uh, right art or right who did not burn a uh, museum but stole the money from a museum, which is not the same, but like in the same kind of gesture. So maybe we could uh, you could <laughs> introduce his piece. I should do that. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm not in charge of the exhibition. Yes, but of, I mean, Jens Horning, he, uh, some of you have probably heard about this, uh, Take the Money and Run, I yeah. think that is the title of, of, of the project. In, uh, in the city of, of Aalborg in, in, in Denmark, he was commissioned to, to do uh, a new version of, of a piece. Uh, and Jens was, uh, he found it to be fairly, I mean, the terms to be really fairly uh, bad. Uh, that, I mean, it would, it would actually cost him money to recreate the piece the museum wanted to include in an exhibition. Uh, and and I, I mean, I'm not sure I can, I can kind of like account for all of, of the parts of the process, but, but of course what, what ended up happening was that the museum transferred a fairly large amount of money, uh, half a million Danish kroner, uh, to Jens Horning. Um, and he was supposed to hand the money back to the museum after the show had, had, uh, had closed. Uh, he, he gave them the title, take the money and run. Uh, and of course announced when the show opened that he would just keep the money as a, as a kind of artistic gesture. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I mean, as, as far as I remember, kind of like, I think the museum is trying to sue Jens. Uh, and of course, Jens is now, uh, it's, it, it, it was a, a large scandal in, in Denmark. He's, I mean, on, pr probably not primarily Jens, but, but several art historians and, and kind of like uh, press, uh, people working in the press are, are trying to persuade the museum not to do it on the grounds that, that they have never had a more successful show than the one uh, this work was a part of. <laughs> I'd like to ask you, the two curators about um, what were your thoughts of you obviously put this historical um, framework and then you mixed it with some new, a lot of new artists like Jens Horning and Espen Beilekjær and Sisla Meineke. What were your thoughts about putting contemporary art into this situationist um, context? Um, <clears throat> as a curator, we love, you know, the, the show in the show in the show in the show, like a Matruchka doll. And uh, because there was like almost three layers, you have like the artworks, new artwork or already existing artwork. You have the uh, reproduction of uh, artworks that were in a previous show, but that are not original. And then you have the scenography itself. 
uh, which is, you know, part of, uh, I mean, which was partly inspired by um, Lars von Trier Dogville, who was like almost a show put into a film. And, uh, and so I think beyond the fact of, you know, putting art in perspective, into like a historical perspective, it was the idea of, you know, being able to, to work into like a meta-meta exhibition. La question c'est, à votre avis, est-ce qu'il reste quelque chose de, de la théorie situationniste aujourd'hui euh, dans un domaine quelconque, euh, à part peut-être ce que moi je peux constater, c'est que certains mots qu'ils ont utilisés sont devenus des mots utilisés maintenant par tout le monde. Mais... En dehors de ça, qui est naturellement un héritage, est-ce qu'il y a quelque part dans le monde, parce que je crois qu'aux États-Unis, ils ont eu une influence qui peut-être dure encore, je ne sais pas trop. Voilà, donc la question, est-ce qu'on peut, qu'est-ce que vous donneriez comme exemple du, de la survie de la pensée situationniste aujourd'hui For me, the obvious example would be uh, the Invisible Committee, Commission Invisible, uh, as, 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 a, as an attempt to, to, um, to, to write, to formulate a, a, a radical critique of, of present-day society, and also to somehow to put it into practice, uh, to, to be involved in different kinds of, of struggles going on in France from... Uh, Uh, La Sonne de Fonte, or uh, to um, Nuit de Boue, or the Yellow Vest Movement, where, uh, where they've, they've had a presence in, in, in different guises, uh, the people who've been involved in, in some of these... Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, from, from the, the Sonne de... I mean, Notre Dame, Notre -Dame de Londres, The Sona de Fonte there to Louis de to to uh, to uh, the Yellow West movement. I, I think there's a, there's a there's a presence of of uh, of some of the 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 analysis of of, of uh, the Invisible Committee. Uh, I mean they, they are part of or are related to to what you talk about. That's the Black Bloc in in, in France. So I think they. Votre réponse, c'est qu'on les trouve partout. Ils ont, ils ont diffusé... Non, mais no, no, I think that's... I mean, the, 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 the three slash four books the Invisible Committee have written, mm. I think they are the best, best example of, of something you could describe as a, as a kind of situationist-inspired theory. And, and, and they, they, they explicitly use the situationists, use the ball, but of course they combine it with Benjamin and Foucault and Deleuze and Agamben and, and many other things, but 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 I think that they, they are the best example and so far as, as as something that's actually directly connected to struggles taking place outside of the university, because of course many, I mean many people are working on the situationist material in different ways, making historical analysis of, of what the situationist project what was about but but uh, but there's not that many um, I mean existing theoreticians or, or, or uh, I mean slash militants who 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 kind of continue the project that that uh, that the situation is was somehow part of but of course that's also I mean this takes us into different territory but of course related but but this is of course this because the Situationist International, and primarily the, the French part of it, I mean, I would, I would describe the Situationist International as perhaps the last instance of a particular kind of Hegelian Marxist revolutionary critique that we don't find anymore. I mean, it, it has disappeared for, for good and bad. I mean, be, be, because, uh, I mean, and, and of course the Situationist The board with the notion of, of uh, the spectacle, but, but perhaps even more importantly, the notion, the critique of everyday life, 
what he was trying to do was expand the Marxist uh, analysis of exploitation, the exploitation taking place in the workplace, in the factories, by pointing to a different kind of exploitation taking place in everyday life uh, when, when we consume. Uh, so he was, he was with the British cultural studies, with Henri Lefebvre, with, uh, I mean, in a certain sense later, with, with people like um, Foucault or Liu Chan, many, many, many others. Uh, the, 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 I mean, the, 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 the breakthrough of, 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 of the feminist tradition, the, the black radical tradition, all of them were somehow pointing to the fact that we are confronted with many different kinds of domin forms of domination. And exploitation is just one form and many, many other sexism, racism, etc. And De Boer was part of that tradition, but of course he was characterized by still um, working with many of the concepts inherited from Marx, class struggle, dialectics, uh, the notion of separation, alienation, etc. And, 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 and many of uh, the contemporary, or many of the people working in the 60s were of course ditching Marxism and saying, or, or articulating this as a radical critique of Marxism. So what, what has taken place, I mean, this is really, bit, I'm pacing, pacing with broad strokes, but what, 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 what we are in a situation today where a previous revolutionary vocabulary is lacking. It has disappeared. It's no longer there. That's, that's also why De Boer comes off looking silly sometimes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not his fault. Uh, it's, 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 it's what has taken place since, but, but, but the whole notion that there's, a, that, that, that there's a logic to history, that there's a dynamic that keeps moving, very few people today subscribe to that. I mean, we can see there's a lot of th things going on, but, but, but it's really difficult to understand what's the relationship between the Yellow Vest movement, the pandemic, Ukraine. I mean, how are all of these things connected? De Boer was able to connect them because he, he had a dialectical, dialectical analysis. But, but, but that's what's missing today. And I, but, but I would, I mean, so, so we, we, we really can't locate something similar to, to, to De Boer today, I, I, I would argue. And that's a kind of objective historical problem. But perhaps it's also, I mean, that's, that it, we start from there, so to say, and, and then have to figure out how all of these different struggles are connected. Black Lives Matter, uh, the feminist struggle. Uh, I mean, how, how all of these struggles connected? It's, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's a problem in the streets and it's a problem theoretically, but that's, that's kind of like, that's, that's one of the most important tasks in front of us, perhaps. Euh, pourtant, il y, a, il y a aussi tout un, un mouvement, excuse-moi, je parle français, euh, sur le web, les hackers, euh, le dark web, euh, Occupy Wall Street, euh, Hacking Bay, etc. Enfin, et ça, mmh. ça me semble être très dans l'esprit de post-situationniste, en fait. Non, non, for sure. I mean, this, 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 uh, I mean, the situationist project. Um, has lived on in, I mean, has, has, has taken on many different guises or shapes afterwards, for sure, uh, and ha has inspired, I mean, it lives on within the institution of art. <laughs> this, this is a, an instance of, of, of this afterlife. But of course, it also lives on in different kinds of, of political struggles, of, of, of different kinds of, of um, forms of activism. Um, so, for sure, yeah, yeah, no, no, for instance, I mean, uh, for sure, no, no, I mean, after, in, in 2007, when the youth house was raided in Copenhagen, for instance, we had this, a squatted house, which has, had existed for several decades, uh, the municipality in Copenhagen decided to sell this house to a fundamentalist Christian sect, for some bizarre reason, and what they, what, what they immediately said about doing was dismantling the house, so people, of course, um, many people, thousands of people went, went into the streets protesting against um, the eviction of the house and the, the municipality selling the house. And one, of, one action that took place, which was a, a fantastic uh, thing, was 
uh, one morning, uh, people in Copenhagen, um, when they kind of like got out into the streets, hundreds of street names in Copenhagen had been changed into Jagtvej because the youth house was located at Jagtvej 69, Jagtvej 69. So, and so, so, so during the night, uh, activists or artists or who, whoever had, had printed uh, road signs and then kind of like glued them on top of existing road signs. So Jagdvej 69 was all over the city all of a sudden. <laughs> and that's of course a, a, an instance of a detournement. So, so many of the tactics are, are, I mean, they're still put into practice, are still used in, in, in different, different instances. For instance, also in, in, in different kinds of, of, of uh, of um, in, in, in uh, different kinds of, of online activism, but I think that the the, the, the point with, with someone like Peter Lamborn Wilson or, or Hakim Bay would would precisely be that his main concept is is temporary autonomous zones, and temporary autonomous zones is there we can also see the difference between the notion of revolution in the ball and the situationist because temporary autonomous zones is precisely they are temporary. So, so, so Hakim Bey has also, for different reasons and in different ways, kind of like, uh, he's also engaged in a critique of, 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 a, of a certain Marxist understanding of revolution in favor of something different, kind of like that, that, that became really uh, important in the, in the rave culture in, in the 90s. Uh.